Let's add some post-processing and emissive textures to Unity with the URP. Alright, we found us back in Unity once more. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can add emissive textures and some post-processing, which is going to look pretty freaking awesome, to your 2D scene right here, once again, with the Universal Render Pipeline. And for this, I highly recommend you go through the last tutorial where I added the Universal Render Pipeline. We basically configured everything and we've added the pretty cool lights that are going to be, well, working over here in 2D. So you can see these lights over here, I can actually increase or decrease the intensity and it only works for the two foregrounds right here in this case so it's pretty cool while the global light works for the two background layers so we've done all of that in the last tutorial highly recommended to watch and now in here what i want to do is this statue all of a sudden appeared and i want the sword to glow in a undetermined color and maybe also add some bloom effect that is going to be really freaking awesome now there's a couple of steps that we need to go through to actually do that and the first one is going to be to actually add another folder right here inside of the rendering and i'm going to call this the shader because we will be using some shaders it's going to be pretty freaking crazy and here i want to create another thing and that is a shader graph go to urp and we want to create the sprite unlit shader i'm going to call this the statue glow and we're going to worry about that in just a moment because before we go into the graph what I actually also want to do is in the statue or any type of texture that you want to admit emissive light, basically, you want to go to the sprite editor. And this is extremely interesting. At the top left corner, what you can do is you can add secondary textures. And this is absolutely amazing because what we can do is we can add the underscore emission. And I have a texture prepared for this. And that is going to be just the part of the sword that I want to have lit up. I'm going to quickly add this. This is the statue light emission texture. You can see I can change this to a point. I can change this to this is going to be 64. Apply that and you might say, well, that's just a white line over here. Oh, it's going to be more than just a white line. So with the statue selected, I'm going to click plus once again, underscore emission. I'm going to select the statue light emission right here as the underscore emission. I'm going to apply and there you go. Nothing else needs to be added. And we can actually now continue with the shader graph. For the shader graph, we actually also want to make a material out of that. So you right click on the actual object itself, create material, and then it's going to create a material out of this. So this is going to be the statue glow material. And there we go. And now you can double click on this and a new window will appear. This is basically a graph view. And this might be absolutely freaking crazy to you. Now let's get not too afraid about all of the new stuff that we see over here. Let's start bit by bit. At the top left corner, we have the statue glow over here. That is the shader graph. And we want to first of all, add a texture that we can use this shader with. So the idea is that we're going to click on this little plus over here, select texture 2D, and this is going to be the main underscore texture. The name of this, you can basically select however you want. There's only one thing once you click on this in the graph inspector over here, another more properties will occur. And what's actually important is that your reference here should be underscore main text because that is going to be the name of the normal main texture as just a unity thing. So do keep that in mind. The name can be anything, but the reference has to be this. And then we can add this by simply dragging it onto the onto the graph right here. Now, I can't really do anything with this texture because it is, well, of type texture, so to speak. So I first have to convert it into a 2D texture for it to then be properly displayed. You can see right now the preview over here is nothing because, well, we're not doing anything. So what I can do is I can drag this node into nothing and then it's going to ask, okay, what kind of a node do we want to create? In this case, we want to create a sample texture 2D. So I'm going to double click on this and now still nothing happens because in our case, well, we actually are not using any texture here for default. Let's choose a texture for default. So click on this little dot over here and we're going to choose the stature. So double click this and you can see this is now the texture that we're basically taking. And I want to take the entire RGB space and put it into the base color right here. This is the output. And then I'm also going to take the alpha and put that into the output as well. And you can see all of a sudden my preview is pretty much exactly my texture as I would expect it to be. I can save this by going to the top left corner and save asset. That is extremely important and do not forget this. And if I were to now go into the scene and actually change this texture here to my custom material, then you will see nothing has changed because in this case, it's all fine over here. So the material, we haven't really changed anything yet, but just wait, now it gets crazy. So I'm going to move this a little bit. And basically what I want to do is I now want to add another texture. So there's going to be another texture to D. This is going to be the emission. And if I click on this once again, this has to be called underscore and then an uppercase emission over here. Very important. 
In this case, I want to select my emission right here. And I want to do the same thing. I'm going to drag this in right here. I'm going to drag the vertex to a new node. We're going to create once again the sample texture right here. There you go. In this case, it's going to be all white. That's totally fine. Because now what I want to do is I want to take this texture and this texture. And I want to combine both of them together. So how can we do that? Well, we can just right click and create a new node. And the node we want to create is the add node. We basically just want to add both textures together. So we're going to take the RGB and add it to A. And we of course want to add this texture. So we're going to take the alpha value of this. And you can see all of a sudden we get this added here. That's very interesting. And I can take the output and put it back to my base color. And you can see now I have a, well, a white overlay of this, which is pretty interesting. If I were to save this now, and go back, I would now have a white overlay. Now you might be like, well, that is a, that is freaking fantastic. What does that get us? Well, crazily enough, this white overlay actually already would be enough for us to have emissive textures over here. So just for the sake of argument, what I'm going to do in the hierarchy, I'm going to right click volume and I'm going to add a global volume. This is basically going to allow me to add post-processing effects to here. I just want to click on new and then a new global volume has been created. And now this is pretty crazy. I can add an override and I can add post-processing and here I can add bloom. And if I were to add bloom, right now nothing happens. But as soon as I add the threshold and the intensity, well, something very, very interesting is going to happen. So if I were to increase the intensity, you will quickly see that there's going to be bloom added to, well, all sorts of textures, including, by the way, the sword right here, which is very, very interesting. And you can see I can continue to do this until, well, at some point the bloom definitely gets too crazy. But first of all, look at the sword right here. So we already have something added to this, which is pretty cool. I can also change the threshold so that now you can see that only certain things are happening. If I push the threshold all the way to the to down, you know, it gets over bloom basically, especially with that high of an intensity. But even something like this could be maybe a style that you're going for. And that is the wonder of this. You can basically always play around with the numbers. I cannot recommend this enough to basically get to exactly this point and play around with the numbers. Even if it might look crazy right now, if something like this is, well, the... The style you're going for, absolutely awesome. You once again, very importantly, you want to go to your main camera and in the camera, you want to make sure that post-processing is turned on. Otherwise, you will not see any of the effects that we've just added. So if you add this and you're like, you know what? I really like this like crazy effect, even though it's like maybe a little bit too crazy over here. That might be a little bit too crazy. Let's turn it down just a little bit. Pull it something like this. And if I were to start the scene over here, all of a sudden you can see... Bam, I got some crazy effect right here. And once again, if this is the type of style you're going for, absolutely freaking go for it, right? I mean, this is already this is already a pretty cool style, but let's finish it up with something pretty spectacular. And that is changing the color right here during the gameplay as well, in theory. So for this, once again, in the statue glow, we can add another element right here. For example, a color, as you can see. And we're just going to call this the color. That's totally fine. And basically, we want to change the color of the text right here before we're adding it to the image. To do this, we're just going to hack this off, basically just deleting that, getting the color right here. And then I'm going to take the color, once again, drag it into nothing. And I'm going to multiply that color. I'm going to choose multiply B with the alpha value of this particular image. Now this, now this is dark because, well, the color right now is uh, black by default. So let's say, for example, I'm going to make a, a you know, a, a, like a lightsaber that's going to be red. So you can actually see this texture over here. And once again, I'm going to add it right here. All of a sudden, this has turned red. Pretty awesome. Once again, save asset. Very important. And then in the scene, you can see all of a sudden I now have a red glowing texture. And on the scene in the statue, instead of taking the immediate material under the under the shader graph, what I can do is I can choose the other material. And you can see I already changed the color over here. And basically it allows us to, well, change this color. And you can see how freaking awesome is this? This, by the way, also would be completely controllable via scripts. So in theory, you could even change the colors over here inside of the script which is absolutely freaking fantastic. And once again, with the global volume, you can change this however much you like, maybe getting, you know, a little bit lower, a little bit higher threshold, whatever you so choose, even adding a tint over here, maybe, you know, maybe everything should be a little bit more green, whatever you choose to do, you can basically do highly recommend it to play around with this. Uh, it is an absolutely awesome tool. And I mean, just look at how freaking awesome this looks. And there's some basic emissive textures as well as some bloom. Next time we'll continue with some basics by adding some basic particles. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.